Okay, you've been patient, you've waited long enough. Let's get on with part two of this amazing video on this amazing, it's my new catchphrase, amazing, everything's amazing, X3650M3 server. So without further ado, here we go. All right, so the uh, both of the virtual machines storage have now been moved to the new D drive here, the SSD drive. Now what I wanna do is I want to switch over to my production machine right here and I want to move these virtual machines over there as well get them all back onto the lab machine where they belong and off of this machine so I'll start with one of them this is a test uh, client so I'm going to go ahead and choose move next I'm going to move the virtual machine which means it's storage and other uh, to another computer running Hyper-V I'm going to type in mcs-lab, that's the name of the machine I want to move it to. Next. I want to move the virtual machine data to a single location. Next. And that is going to be the SSD drive and Hyper-V machine folder. 13.72 gig, I'm going to click on next. And then finish and let the uh, move run. We'll come back when that's done. Right. Well, it appears it was successful. Uh, let's go out and see if it's on the uh, if it's on the lab machine, and there it is, right there. So it successfully moved it. All right. I'm going to move the rest of these machines, namely. Let me show you here what I'm going to move. I'm going to move Windows 10 Pro, Ultimate Lab One, uh, Windows 7 64, Ultimate Lab One and Two, are going to be moved back over there as well. I want them off of my production machine and back over on my new shiny IBM lab server. So we'll come back when all that's done. All right, so all of our virtual machines have been moved back from the production server over to the new IBM uh, MCS lab server. And let's just see, uh, it's taken up a bit of space, so, but I still have 115 gig free on that SSD drive. So we should be good on there. And you can see how easy it was to use Hyper-V to move those machines back and forth. And, you know, this is one of the primary reasons I use Windows products and uh, especially Hyper-V now that all of this is built in. Because if I were to use, uh, <clears throat> if I were to use VMware, I would need additional tools to uh, do these uh, server migrations. And, uh, yeah, I'm just not, uh, I'm just not into that. All right, so now that we have uh, all of our uh, lab machines back over to our lab computer, I want to go ahead and boot up the domain controller for this lab. Uh, this this runs off the SSD drive, and uh, we'll see. Uh, I had it running off of the spinning hard drive, and it was not as fast as it could be. I got kind of spoiled with those SSD drives over on that Dell uh, because those machines are very fast. Uh, so let's boot it up here and uh, let's get a speed comparison and see if I can sense that this machine is any faster than it was on the spinning hard drive. Now this was in the middle of an update when I shut this machine down so it should go out and complete the update. Probably not a good test but I just wanted to get a feel for uh, if I thought it was any faster than uh, than when it was running off the spinning hard drive. So I'm not going to make you sit here and wait. We'll come back uh, when the machine does something and I'll give you my uh, unsolicited opinion. All right, uh, so the uh, server is up and running. The primary domain controller for the lab is up and running. It only took a couple of minutes to boot, but I'm going to do a, a better boot. This is the backup domain controller, so I'm going to go ahead and start it up and you can time it there on your end. See how quick it comes up. We'll do this one in real time. I won't cut the video. We'll sit here and talk. I have been uh, experimenting with uh, uh, ESXi. Boy, that was quick, wasn't it? Now let's see if I can log in and if all is well. Like I said, I've been experimenting with ESXi. I'm, I'm not uh, saying I won't ever use ESXi, but man, every time I use it, I can run it back to Windows Hyper-V. Uh, I don't know what it is, but uh, I just cannot, and I'll, I'll, the proof is in the pudding, I'll, 
I'll show you all a, uh, a video. I'm going to make a video on ESXi and one of the reasons I don't uh, use it. Uh, I have found that though that you can get ESXi, you can get a whole package of their hypervisor and their vCenter, vSphere manager if you join a club. Uh, it's, t it's about $200 a year, but you get access to all the software and you get to use it free in a non-production environment for a year. So I may consider that uh, if I can ever get ESXi to work the way I want it to. And I will be specific in that video as to why I don't use ESXi and one of the reasons I don't, especially for Windows machines. But I digress. So here is the secondary domain controller. Uh, let's. It is up and running. Let's see if I can get out to the internet with it. Because remember, this is on. This is on a uh, subnet. I mean, this is on a, a separate VLAN. Uh, VLAN 20. But we'll just see if I can go out to. Uh, see, we we'll go out to Google. And it's warning me about a secure site. There's Google, so I know my internet's working. And of course, this this is because I have this secure mode enabled on Windows Server. So I'm going to go ahead and log off of this machine as well, and leave it running. Now the true test will be a Windows 10 uh, Pro machine. I'm going to go ahead and uh, connect, and I'm going to fire that one up as well. And hopefully that'll work. But you can see it's much, much, I can already tell you, it's much snappier with that SSD drive in there, booting these virtual machines off of it. And, uh, uh, I mean, it's like night and day faster. Nothing wrong with spinning drives, but I'm going to relegate that to the operating system. You see how quick this Windows 10 unit came up. Uh, let me, hopefully it'll log into my domain controller here, get an IP, and all will be well with the world. And it'll come up to a Windows 10 desktop. and So I'll talk to fill the, the void here. But I wanted you to see this in real time. So you saw that there were no camera edits or cutaways or anything like that. There we are. We're up and running. Uh, let's see. Go into Google Chrome. and Yeah, we know it's not set as default. But it will be. It will be like right now and look at look at this is what I hate about Microsoft switch anyway yes of course that's why I told you the first time I went to switch let's go to the Chrome Web Store bingo it's working it should be on subnet 20 the other thing I don't like about Windows 10 they've changed this they have changed it uh, let's see where do I go change it after options yeah, I can go there. I'll just go here, make it easy, go to status. And yep, it's getting an IP from our DHCP server. This is on the 20 subnet and the 20 VLAN. So our VLANs are all working. Everything's working with that new IBM. Uh, let's see if we show available networks. No, don't want to see that. Change adapter options. Nope. Change connection properties. There it is. So now I can see it there too. That's a sim that's uh, similar to going out to the network adapter and doing a status. Uh, so we see we got our IP, see our DNS servers, sees our lab.local network, uh, and it sees it as the Hyper-V network adapter. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and log out of this. Yes, I have the classic start menu. That's why you don't see that confounded Windows menu. Let's uh, do our Windows 7 machine now. Let's power it on. It should come up fairly quickly as well. I have been so tempted to go back to Windows 7 so many times. It just works. Look at that. Look at the speed of these virtual machines. I cannot get over. Even with a cheap consumer off the show. Well, relatively cheap. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to activate. Yes, I know. If I don't activate, the world will come to an end. So uh, my Windows, my copy of Windows 7 is not genuine. Uh, uh, this is the first time I moved this machine, so Windows 7 always installs new hardware, so I have to restart. And then yes, I will come back and activate this software shortly. But I just want you to see the the, the zippity doodah speed of these virtual machines. Um, 
on this uh, new IBM server with the SSD drive. Ask me later, please. Yes, I know. It's important for Windows to be genuine, because if not, it can be hacked by people other than Microsoft. So, alrighty. So there you go. There's our, uh, here's our virtual machine. It's getting a processor. It's getting two gig of RAM, 64 bit operating system. Let's see if we've got a, see if we've got a network IP. I'm sure we do, because it allows us to join the network. Yep. DHCP is working. DNS is working. Let's see if we can go out to the internet. Look, this is this virtual machine is just as fast as if I were sitting in front of a physical machine. In fact, it might be faster because of the uh, SSD drive. Well, there you go. All uh, almost all of our virtual machines are up and running. Let's just do one more. Keep our task manager up over here. You can see it's consuming more and more memory as we go along. Our uh, 16 logical processors are humming along there. So if I were you, the money I would spend on my server would be on an SSD drive and RAM because uh, I think you're going to get more bang for your buck out of that. now. Eventually, I hope to update the, both of these processors to a 6-core, uh, what is that, a 5680 processor that is a 6-core. So that'll give me, what, 24 logical press processors? I don't know. I'd have to do the math on it. But uh, that can happen later. It doesn't need to happen right away. Uh, as I start really pounding... This uh, lab server, this is going to be you know, where I test everything else out on, and my Dell is going to be relegated strictly to running my business. I'm not going to be using that anymore for anything other than uh, production uh, because I cannot afford to take that server up and down during the day. This one I can play around with and uh, you know, do what I need to do with it. Uh, and I, you know, I'm impressed by this IBM. I have to say Morton was right. These IBM servers are really nice. Uh, but then again, so is my Dell server. So, all right, so there you go. I've got all of these uh, machines up and running with the exception of my uh, my uh, thin client. That's what this Windows 7 thin client 001 I was doing some testing with. So I've got all these machines up and running. Some of them, are, they're all using dynamically, uh, I think dynamic RAM. Let's go look here. Yeah, they are. They're all using dynamic RAM. Uh, so they they give and receive RAM as often as they need to. Now this is uh, this processor ramps up and slows down and ramps up as it's needed, uh, and that is a, a setting in the BIOS that I have to uh, research a little bit more. But uh, there you go. All the virtual machines have now been moved over to the new lab machine. It's up and running and everything appears to be doing very well. So there you go. Uh, you've seen it up and running. You've seen me upgrade the RAM in it. You've seen me put an SSD into it. You've seen me, uh, you haven't seen me load a, an operating system on there. That's another story all by itself. In fact, I'll tell that story right now. Uh, I wasn't sure that I wanted to run Windows on this machine, Windows Hyper-V, uh, because I wax and I wane back and forth between running ESXi as a hypervisor uh, Zen server as a hypervisor or Microsoft and they ran across another product that everybody's been raving about and that is Proxmox and I gotta tell you without going into too much detail that I am really 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 impressed with what you can do with a Proxmox server and it's basic, basically it's a virtualization solution written on Linux but keep in mind it has Linux underneath it so there's all other kinds of neat nifty stuff you can do with Proxmox. So this server has not only had Windows Server loaded on it, it's had ESXi loaded on it, did some testing with it, and it's had Proxmox loaded on it, and I did some testing on that as well. And my the big thing for me is I need it to be able to run Windows Virtual Machines, and I need the virtual machine data transfer speeds to be as fast as a physical machine. In other words, when I transfer a file from my file server onto a Windows 7 or Windows 10 virtual machine under Windows Hyper-V, I get the full speed, 100 megabits per second, or megabytes per second. Uh, 
the problem is I've never been able to achieve those speeds in a Windows 7 or Windows 10 virtual machine under ESXi and unfortunately under Proxmox as well. I got close to it, closer than I did with ESXi, but not the full enchilada. So of course this is going to be a, a lab machine, but I'm going to be running a lot of mission critical machines on it doing testing. So I wanted the fastest hypervisor I could get. So now I'm going to do a another video comparison wise showing you what I'm talking about speed tr transfer speeds uh, because maybe it's just something I'm missing. Uh, but uh, I won't go into too much detail on that. But uh, I paid 177 I think, for this server plus $40 shipping. So and I got it from my good friends at Garland uh, Computers uh, up in Irving, Texas. Like I said, got it off eBay. Uh, it did have a, a an issue when I powered the machine off. There were there was a high speed fan still running, and I narrowed it down to the power supply as I showed you, and and you heard it. Pulled the power supply out. It's working. Uh, the other one is working fine. It has redundant power supplies. Called Garland, and they're shipping me another power supply. No questions asked. And, they told me to keep the old one as a spare just in case. So the other thing I did is I went on eBay because now Morton claims he's never had a single M3 system fail. But if you watch his videos, you do, you do know he had that 3650 M4 system board failure. These machines are 11, 10, 11 years old now, and I, I just don't want to check, take a chance on not being able to get parts for it. So I went on eBay and found a, another motherboard for it, a spare motherboard for 40 bucks. I pulled the trigger and ordered that today. And at the same time, I ordered a replacement board for my Dell R710 while they're available. Uh, because as, as they start getting rid of uh, old stock on these, uh, they're gonna be hard to come by. And this has become a mission critical server for me. So I don't wanna be without a motherboard in case something happens to one of these. And then I'm gonna order additional power supplies and that kind of thing for these. Uh, just in case they ever go out of production and, and the, the parts run out. Now one thing I didn't do, or I didn't show you that I did, was I upgraded all the firmware, everything on this IBM before I did anything with it. Uh, and I followed uh, Morton's instructions over at my Playhouse. Now there's no need for me to make a separate video about this. I mean Morton's and my channel are similar, but I would rather defer you over to Morton's channel and the video, the great video he did on how he upgraded the BIOS and firmware on all of his M3 servers. So go out and check out Morton's, uh, Morton's site at my playhouse and he's got those videos up there. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, I also didn't show you installing the operating system on there because that's pretty much straightforward. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to waste a bunch of time showing you the install and I, I was up for the past three days playing with this thing uh, and I if I'd have filmed it all I'd have a 300 hour video and I don't think y'all want to see that so uh, but again very happy with the uh, purchase the decision I made to purchase the server got to get it put into the rack in there but uh, we'll get that done here shortly so anyway we hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always if you liked it smash that like button give us a thumbs up we like the like button if you didn't like it smash the thumbs up button or go slam your hand in a door and get over it if you didn't like the video, I don't care. And uh, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave your comments down in the comments section. And if you have any questions on this video, remember you can reach us at Playhouse at gmail.com. We take donations via PayPal and Patreon. If you're so inclined, I'd love to get some money in here uh, and get some more SSD drives for this, uh, for this server so we can play around with lots of new stuff on this uh, lab server now that it's back in here so anyway thanks again for watching and don't forget we will see you on the other side